Hey guys, so this is going to be a guide about early and mid game. Since I already released a guide on the comp list for set 4.5, that includes like all the final boards or the final comp that you're going to have. And this guide, I'm going to be talking about some of the early and mid game boards that you might, you might see, depending on what chosen you get. So I'm going to be talking about the one cost and two cost chosens that you can get, and then the various boards that go along with those chosens. Obviously, you know, you're not gonna be hitting the same, same, cho same chosens or you're not gonna be hitting the same units every game. You have to be a little more flexible sometimes. And also depending on your items, you might be playing different units. You might sell your chosen earlier. You might sell your chosen level six or level seven and, and pivot into another board. But this is just a general, general guide, very general guideline. And like depending on what chosen you get, what units you usually look out for, and what kind of boards your boards will look like early mid game and until your late game pivot into your late game comp. Some of these boards for these chosens will look very, very similar. For example, like Nidalee, Nidalee chosen or Garen chosen, doesn't matter whether you get which one you get, your boards will be look the same. So I'm not going to cover like, I'm not going to go over Garen and Nidalee chosen separately. I'll probably do it at the same time, something like that. So first we're going to be going over Dragon Soul. I'm only going to be talking about the early game chosens that you can get. So basically only the one cost and two cost chosens. So the Dragon Soul chosen you can get are Brand, Tristana, or Braum. First I'm going to talk about Dragon Soul Brand. Normally for Dragon Soul Brand, I never pick this up. This is a very, very weak chosen and it doesn't synergize well with Dragon Soul traits. But usually if, if you do pick this Dragon Soul Brand up, you're going to be probably be playing Braum as your frontline unit. Round out the Drag 3 Dragon Soul buff. And if you're playing Braum, you're probably playing a Vanguard. So it can be Garen, it could be Nautilus, it could be Wukong, whatever. And then since you're playing Brand, you probably want to round out with three mages. So the, the mages are going to be TF and Lulu. And then um, once you get Vagar, you can take in Vagar for Twisted Fate. Something like this. This can be like your example level 5 board. And then at level 6, you can uh, put in an Elderwood. So you can either put in Rakan for um, three Elderwood. And then at level 7, you can put in a Keeper. You can put in a Jarvin or a Kennen. Like Kennen here or Jarvin here. Something like this. Uh, there's also another variation that's probably better. You can probably not play Braum. If you if you hit Shivana, you can play Shivana instead, which is which is a little better because you can just play Maokai here for Brawler and you round out D3 out of the wood perfectly. Something like this. And a, a comp that you can pivot into from this spot, from this position, is probably the Elderwood Zaya comp. It's a very easy transition because you'll be keeping Lulu, Vagar, and Maokai most likely. So next we'll talk about uh, Dragon Soul Tristana. Dragon Soul Tristana is going to work very, very similar to the brand one, except you're going to be playing sharpshooters as your backline instead of mages. So it's it's pretty much the same thing. Braum frontline or Shivana frontline with brawlers, Braum with vanguards, and then you're going to be playing uh, sharpshooters. So when you play sharpshooters, a lot of the boards are going to be very similar. You're going to want to play Teemo. Teemo is one of the best early mid-game sharpshooters. And if you play Teemo, you're going to want to pair it with a spirit. So you can either pair it with Kindred or you can pair it with Yumi, something like this. Or you can, uh, if you if you end up not hitting Teemo, you probably be playing Nidalee a little earlier. If you're playing Nidalee, you kind of want to play Garen. If you play and if you're playing Garen, you kind of you can round it out with a Warlord such as Vi or Jarvan's probably better. And if you play Jarvan, you can play a Keeper. Pretty pretty simple. If you don't have Sharpshooter chosen, I would never go for Sharpshooters because you you need to play too many units, too many like too many backline units, and I don't really like that. But yeah, generally you do want to play Teemo with it. I actually think Dragon Soul Tristana is actually pretty good because she Tristana actually uses Dragon Soul buff better than Brand because of her attack speed steroid. So if Braum dies and she gets a Dragon Soul buff, she'll probably proc Dragon Soul once or twice because of her attack speed steroid, which is very good. So let's say you play this board. And you kind of want to, you know, you can play Teemo and then you can play Kindred. And then depending on what items you get, let's say you get like a lot of sword or bow items. Let's say you play, you made a Runant and you made a Deathblade. So this is obviously a transition. You're going to be pivoting into some sort of Slayer comp and just transferring the items from Tristana to Olaf or uh, Trinomir. Uh, but let's say you, you get like more, more bows than swords. Like let's say you get like RFC and then you get Guinsus, whatever. Then obviously you can pivot into a Kale board, right? This is re these are really good Kale items. The last Dragon Soul chosen is Dragon Soul Braum. It's gonna be very, very simple. You can either go the Mage variant or the Sharpshooter variant with Tristana or Brand. It's the it's gonna be the same thing. So next I'll be talking about Mage chosen. Mage chosen. When you're playing Mage chosen, you can get either Brand Mage, TF Mage, or Lulu Mage, and you're gonna be running all similar boards with a Mage chosen. Every time you get a Mage chosen, you want to be going for five Mages uh, mid game because it's very easy to fit in. But obviously, early game, you want to play TF, round out the three mages, and you can play whatever frontline you want. Like, you can play either Vanguards with Garen, Nautilus, or you can play bra Brawlers with Maokai and Vi, something like this. But what I like to do is I tend to lean more towards Brawlers because you can you can play Maokai, 
and you know the mages, you're going to probably be playing Lulu and Vagar. Something like this to round out the 5 mage, 2 brawler, two, uh, 3 elderwood. Which is extremely strong early mid game. You, can get, you might be able to get Annie. Oh, I forgot about Annie. You, you can also get uh, mage Annie chosen. Wow, there's a lot of mages. You can, once you get Annie, Annie will be a better frontliner for TF and something like this. And then this from this spot, it's like an easy transition into Elderwood Zaya. Or if you have a mage chosen, you could probably play mage reroll and reroll for Annie 3, Vagar 3, Lulu 3 and play 7 mages, something like this. TF, you keep the TF and you play Aesol for 7 mages. You probably solo frontline Annie and you just round out your board with uh, other units. But usually keeping a 1 cost chosen this late into the game is not that good. So I would probably not go for a mage reroll unless you have a Lulu or Annie chosen mage chosen instead. If you you have another option, if you have brand mage, you can also reroll for brand three, but I, I don't think it's that consistent. Same thing with same thing. If you were to get mage Lulu, your board would probably look something. You can go the if you get Ma mage Lulu, you could push levels and then just reroll for Annie three, Vagar three, Lulu three at level seven, or you can just play regularly. You can play once you have Lulu chosen, you probably play a brand for three mages. You play Maokai frontline uh, for brawlers, and then if you end up in the mid game, you end up hitting Vagar. You can add another mage for five mage, two brawler, three Elderwood. It's gonna be the same board as as Brand. Same thing with any mage. The thing about any mage is that Annie is already a frontline unit, so you can drop actually drop the brawlers and and play maybe like Rakan Jarvan for keeper, something like this. Is a very very strong. Uh, mid game comp and you can just transition into elderwood uh, zaya from here same thing with tf mage chosen same board so uh, the only thing with tf mage chosen is that you could maybe let's say you get brand since tf is a cultist you can maybe play elise and then you can play like a pike for three cultist three mage which is pretty good you can play let's say you get annie you put annie in and then lulu you can play five mage three cultist in a, in a mid game or you might be able to you, you might drop like brand and annie you just stick to three mages and then instead you can play Callista, Sivir, and Vladimir. And then you can play like six cultists, three mage, something like this. So we covered uh, Dragon Soul and Mage so far. Let's move on to Diana. Diana chosen. If you get Assassin or Spirit, just play the reroll Diana. It's very, very strong right now. It's covered in my comps list. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, please check that out first. But yeah, if you get a Diana chosen, I would just almost always try to play reroll Diana. So for Elise, cho Elise, let's say you get Keeper chosen. Uh, I I almost never pick up this uh, Keeper Elise because I think it's pretty weak. But basically, if you if you pick up Keeper Elise, Elise is gonna be your frontline already. So you're gonna be playing some kind of backline. Backline can either be sharpshooters, or it can be mages, or it can be assassins. But usually, I like to play sharpshooters because if you end up hitting Sivir, it'll synergize very well. Plus, Sivir is a cultist, so you can round out your team like this, and then you can play a Vladimir for some kind of two sharpshooter. You know two keeper three cultist usually if you get keeper chosen you want to try to fit in four keepers because it's very cheap and easy to get so you're looking for jarvin and rakan something like this and then you can maybe round this out with uh cultists so tf vladimir something like this four 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 keeper three cultists very very strong and then maybe uh mid game you can put in a annie and you can put in a lulu for four keeper three mage three cultists something like this but generally generally if you do get keeper if you get a keeper chosen you want to just keep in mind that you want to go for four keepers usually the other keeper chosen include jarvin and rakan so if you do end up getting keeper jarvin or keeper rakan you also want to be playing four keepers and then it'll be similar boards except now um if you're if you, if you get jarvin keeper you know you most of the time you want to play in italy and then you want to play garen so you max you get the three early game warlords if you play garen you're gonna be playing uh vanguards with it you can drop Garen and play Vi instead. And then if you play Vi, you are playing Brawlers, right? And then if you're playing Sharpshooters, you probably play Teemo and Kindred. You talked about earlier. Something like this. Very, very strong. You know, same thing with Rakan. If you get Rakan Keeper, you can uh, dive into the Elderwood variants where you can play Lulu and you can play Vagar, Brand, Vagar for three mages, you know, Elderwood. Maybe drop these two and then you end up getting four Keepers, which is extremely strong. You play Jarvan and you play Elise. Four Keeper, three Mage, three Elderwood. This is extremely strong. Then you can pivot into uh, Zaya Elderwood very easily. Cultist Elise, very simple. Basically, if you're if you get a Cultist chosen, you're just gonna be playing three Cultists early game and then uh, mid game, like around level six, you can roll down for six Cultists, or level seven, you can roll down for six Cultists. If you're playing TF with it, you can play Mages with it. If you're playing Sivir, you can play Sharpshooters with it. And if you play, you know, if you play, if you're playing Vladimir, you can play a Nasus for Siphoner. Something like this. Other cultist chosen can be Pike, TF, and Vladimir. Whatever cultist chosen you get, I would just try to play three cultists early game and mid game play six cultists. Level seven, roll down for upgrades. 
I talked about it in my comps list. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Next, we'll move on to uh, Duelist Chosen. Duelist Chosen consists of D uh, Fiora or Yasuo or Jax. If you get Duelist Chosen, you almost always want to play four Duelists. So this is going to be your board. And then you want to pair this with probably Janna for Enlightened. And then you want to play Yumi for Mystic. And this is very, very strong. You, If you high roll, you could play six Cultists. If you hit Kalista and you happen to hit a Trindamere, you could play six Duelists. Which is very very strong, but it's it, you need to hit Trinimir to hit this. But usually you're playing, you know, Janna. You know, you can play Aurelia, Janna, Yumi, something like this. If you hit a Shen, you can take out a Yumi for Shen, and then you can already see what comp you can pivot into late game, right? You can pivot into Talon, very very easy. You're using a lot of units that's gonna be stay into in the Talon comp. So it, it goes the same with Fiora, Jax, and Yasuo. The only thing is, if you get Yasuo chosen, you can go reroll Yasuo. I would, I would generally not play uh, reroll Fiora because I don't think it's that consistent and it falls off late game. Whereas Yasuo can uh, scale well if you hit Yone. So uh, same thing with Enlightened Chosen. So Enlightened Chosen, it's going to be a similar board where you're trying to play four duelists with Yasuo, Jax, and Kalista. But this actually allows... You, you need to play... You need to hit Kalista for, for, for this to work. So, you know, I would probably... If you have the Enlightened Chosen, most likely you're going to be playing two duelists instead. And then you're going to try to get 4 Enlightened. So you're going to play Janna, you're going to play Aurelia. Uh, 4 Enlightened, Fiora Chosen is extremely, extremely strong. You want to aim for this board. And then you just put in, you know, you just round out your comps, play Mystic, and then or play 4 Duelist, and then pivot into Talon. Enlightened Janna. Enlightened Janna, very similar to Fiora, where you want to play Fiora and Aurelia for 4 Enlightened. But the thing about Enlightened Janna is you don't really need to go for 4 Enlightened. You can play almost any comp with this, because uh, she she's basically a utility or frontline unit. So you can play Janna here, and you can play whatever comp. You can play Sharpshooters with it, you know, you can play Nidalee and Teemo, and then you can play Yumi here for Mystic. Extremely strong board with some sort of frontline, whether it be Vanguard or Brawlers. And then, or you can play, you know, you can play Assassins with Diana and Akali with some sort of frontline, you know, Vanguard or Brawlers, whatever. Janna is very, very flexible and one of the strongest unit chosen in the game right now. But Janna is usually generally very, very flexible for the early mid game. You can play anything with it. Vanguard Chosen. Vanguard, the early game Vanguard Chosen include Garen, Nautilus, Braum, and Wukong. So these are the Vanguard Chosen you can get early game. If you get a Vanguard Chosen, you almost always want to be going for four Vanguards mid game or early game. And it's actually very easy to get. So it'll, it'll look something like this. And then your backline will most likely be Sharpshooters. The, the reason why you're going to be playing Sharpshooters is because you, you, you literally synergize this very well with Garen so you can get Warlord. And then if you're playing Nidalee, you most likely want to play Teemo and then a, a Spirit. Because Teemo is very strong and Spirit is very strong right now. And obviously, if you have Garen, if it's a Garen Vanguard chosen, you want to buff Garen as much as possible. So you do want to get the Warlord in, something like this. This can be like, this is an example, like level 7 board. You could, if you don't end up not hitting Vanguards, you can just play two Vanguards. And just round out your board with maybe, you know, Keeper with Rakan. Just play, you know, generally play strong units. Maybe you hit four... Four sharpshooters, Sivir, along with Tristana. But usually, usually when I, if you don't have sharpshooter chosen, I would stay away from four sharpshooters. It's too much backline and not enough frontline. So it'll be the same thing. Like if you if you were to get Nautilus chosen, it would look the same. Braum chosen, it would look the same. But yeah, normally you want to be playing four Vanguard, something like this, Kindred, something like this. If you're playing Yumi, you know you can play Janna, something like this. Very very strong board. And then from this spot, you know, same thing with the sharpshooter I talked about earlier. You get like uh, Olaf items on your care on your sharpshooter. You you pivot into slayers. If you get KO items, you pivot into executioners, etc. Next, we're gonna we'll talk about warlord chosen. So the warlord chosen you can get is Garen, Jarvan, Nidalee, and Vi. So these are the five warlord chosen you can get. So if you get warlord Garen, it'll be the same thing. Except you, it, it'll be the same thing as the vanguard board that we looked at. But you don't need to play four vanguards. You probably don't play four vanguards and just play two because it's very hard to fit in four vanguards. But if you have warlord chosen, it's very easy to fit in warlords and you want to try to get six warlords in. So, you know, you play Jarvan and you play Vi and then at level you're, at level six or level seven, you can roll down for six warlords and you can play Katarina carry, something like this. If you were to get Vi chosen, let's switch around. If you get the Vi warlord, you know, you can probably drop Wukong and play Maokai for brawler instead. But it's generally like the, a similar board. All right. So Brawler Chosen, if you were to get Brawler Chosen, it's very similar to Vanguards where you want to fit in four Vanguards, but if you get Brawler Chosen, you generally want to fit in four Brawlers. So you play Tom Kanj and you play Vi here, and then you can you play you play whatever backline you want, right? Whether it's Sharpshooters or Mages, Sharpshooters is uh, same thing, Nidalee, Teemo, Kindred, same, the same boards that we've looked at. Or you can play Mages with Lulu, Brand, 
TF, something like this. Even better, you play Vagar for Elderwood. And then if you play this board, you can pivot into Elderwood Zaya. Let's say you get Elderwood chosen. Elderwood chosen will be similar to as if you were to get uh, Warlord chosen, but instead, so you'll be playing two brawlers in, as uh, as opposed to four brawlers. And then, but it's very very easy to fit in six warlords if you end up getting Lulu, Vagar, Rakan, and Nunu. So this is a very very high roll level six Elderwood board. Um, generally, if you get an Elder, if I get an Elderwood chosen and I don't have six Elderwood by level six, at level seven I will almost always roll down for six Elderwood to have a really really good stage four. And then you can just pivot really well into the Elderwood Zaya comp. The other Elderwood Chosens are Lulu Elderwood and Rakan Elderwood. Lulu Elderwood and Rakan Elderwood, it'll be very, very, it, it'll be the exact same place out as if you were to get Elderwood Maokai. You want to go for six Elderwood mid game, um, early game. You just want to be playing Keepers, Mages, Brawlers, etc. Next, we will talk about Divine Chosen. Divine Chosen early game will be Nasus, Jax. If you get Divine Chosen, you know, you you want to try to fit in four Divine. So Jax plus Aurelia, four Divine. And then you just round your comp with whatever. You know, you can play Vladimir for Siphoner with Nasus. You can play Yasuo, Duelist with, with Jax. You can play Fiora, Duelist with Jax, usually, and you get the Enlightened. And then, um, you know, if you're playing Divine, it, it's it's like Divine Enlightened, Janna, Yumi, and it's easy transition into Talon. Nothing nothing, nothing else much to say, say there. Um... Next, we'll talk about Siphoner Chosen. If you end up getting Nasus Siphoner, I would, um, you could go for Nasus 3 reroll because um, it's very, very strong. If you had the items for it, I would go for it. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I recommend checking out my comps video guide. I talk about the Siphoner and Nasus reroll comp. If you if you end up getting Siphoner and Nasus, you actually don't need to play Vladimir. You know, you get three Siphoners, but Vladimir is just a very strong unit with Siphoner, so I would almost always play it still. The, the, the units you're going to be playing with it are very, very similar. Nasus is a frontline unit, so you can pair this with... You know, you can pair this with sharpshooters. You can pair this with assassins. Siphoner chosen. Same thing with Vladimir. If you do end up getting the Siphoner of Vladimir, it, it'll be a little different than Nasus, where whereas you'll probably be playing some some sort of cultist with TF, Elise, something like this, or you can play you know Callista, Sivir, some sort of cultist board instead of a divine board. So next, we'll be talking about sharpshooter chosen. It can be sharpshooter Nidli, sharpshooter Tristana, or sharpshooter Timo. It's gonna be very. It's gonna be like uh, the, uh, very similar boards for all three of these chosen's. You're gonna try to fit in four sharpshooters like this, and then your front line will either be vanguards or brawlers. Pretty pretty simple. You can maybe also play keep if you don't have good uh, vanguard brawlers. You can play keepers with Rakan Jarvan, and you just round round out with warlords spirits. I would tend to stay away from dragon soul if you don't have dragon soul chosen. Next is the fortune chosen. If you end up getting a Fortune Tom Kench, um, I talked about this in my uh, comp sky, but almost always I would try to stack all of Sage 2. You play a Annie here, and then you have three Fortune, you stack all of Sage 2, and then you stack all Stage 3 until uh, after Carousel at Stage 3 5, you roll down to cash out. And when you roll down to cash out, you usually want to play Katarina carry. So you want to play Tom Kench with Katarina, you want to be holding a Brawler to buff Tom Kench, and you want to play Pike or any Assassin to buff Katarina. And, you know, maybe you want to play Vi is better here, and you can play Jarvan for Warlord to buff Katarina. And then you just, you know, you can play, you can, at level 7, which will you will be at, you'll probably play Keeper here, and then maybe you roll down, you hit an Aatrox, you can play Aatrox here, and I'm, I guarantee you this board will probably cash out at stage 3. You want to be going for Katarina items, and tank items on Tom Kench. If you were to get any fortune, it's going to be very similar. Almost always, I would probably sack stage 2, play Katarina. Same strategy. But the other thing is, getting fortune Annie, is it's a free 2-star two 2's cost unit in the early game. It's very, very strong, so you could go for win streak fortune. What what I mean by that is you can you you want to get mages in, so you can buff Annie. It's actually ex extremely, extremely strong. So you play TF, Lulu, Annie, and you, you want to get a fortune in. Most likely, it's going to be Tom Kench, something like this. But you just stack Annie with tank items, and it's gonna be very, very strong. You, you just play mages with with Annie. Mystic Mystic Janna, same thing as Enlightened Janna, where you can just play any you can play any comp any board with this. It's very, very flexible. All you need is some sort of frontline and backline. Frontline will be either vanguards or brawlers, and then backline will either be assassins, mages, or sharpshooters. So let's talk about assassin chosen. If you're the assassin chosen you can get are Pike, Diana. If you end up getting Pike, I already talked about Diana. If you get Diana, you want to play the reroll version. But if you end up if you get end up getting Pike, you usually want to try to fit in four assassins because it's very strong. 
to play Diana and you can play Akali for four assassins with some sort of frontline and this is extremely strong early mid game. If you have Pike, you can try to, try to fit in cultists with TF. With Pike though, you don't have to play four assassins. You can just play two assassins and just play uh, whatever strong units you hit. But usually you can play, you know, cultists. You get a free cultist. You can play Nidalee and Sivir if you hit. Then you play Elise and then you play, you know, this gives you three cultists, two sharpshooters and you play Jarvan. For the and then you play another vanguard something like this this is a very very strong like level 7 board where you get sharpshooters warlords cultist and keeper very very strong uh, if uh, next we're gonna be talking about uh slayer slayer chosen so slayer chosen you can either get zed or pike if you do get slayer chosen you almost all, almost always want to be playing three slayers so if you get zed chosen you want to play pike pike chosen you want to play zed and then this this will be your backline damage so all you need to round out with this is probably an assassin so maybe a diana to buff pike and you want to play some sort of frontline, and this will be a very strong early mid game. Um, if you if you if you get a Slayer chosen, you could play Spirit Zed with three Slayers. So you want to be playing. You can you can just not even play frontline. You can you can just stack Spirit, and this will be a four Spirit three Slayer at level six, which is extremely strong. You just stack uh, bow items on Zed, uh, pretty simple, and you just play uh, Spirit Zed. All right, next we're gonna be talking about uh, Fabled Chosen. So the only Fabled Chosen you can get in the early game is probably Fabled Nautilus. So I actually don't have much experience playing this because this is actually very rare. But when you do get Fabled Nautilus, you usually want to look for Nico to round out the Fabled, but you probably won't get Nico until level six or level seven. But usually you want to play, you know, you want to play Vanguards with Nautilus and you want to play some sort of backline damage, whether it's Sharpshooters or Assassins or Mages. Uh, but generally, I would say probably at 3-2 level 6 or at uh, four, uh, stage 4-1 level 7, you do want to roll down for the Nico to round out your Fabled. And then you just play, you know, Yumi and Janna for 4 Vanguard, 4 Mystic, something like that. And you stack Nico with AP items. And I think that just about sums up all of the Chosens that you can get early game and what kind of boards you can play with it. So as you can see from the guide, generally if you're playing some sort of Vanguard, Warlord, Sharpshooter board... You, you, you will try to pivot into Slayers and Executioners, so you want to try to be getting Olaf items, KO items from your mid-game carousels. If you're playing some sort of Brawler Elderwood, you want to be going for Zaya and Aso items and pivoting into Zaya Elderwood usually. If you're playing some sort of Enlightened uh, Divine board, you want to try going for uh, Morgana and Talon items and pivoting into Talon. Hopefully this will help you guys out to have a general like idea of what your early and mid-game boards are going to look like, depending on what Chosen you get. Let me know in the comments below uh, if any if I missed anything, any, any other boards that you know you generally play that have been really really strong, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.